How's it going YouTube and welcome to today's install video. So I have a question for you. How do you know when it's time to replace your stock drive shafts? Well I'm going to tell you and it sounds something like this. Now keep in mind that this sound is only coming from my drive shaft when I put it in four wheel drive. So that limits it to the front end of the drivetrain. So now that we know that it's actually the front drive shaft that needs to be replaced, what do we do? So I went online and I bought an Adams drive shaft. They have pre-measurements or you can actually do the measurement yourself to get an accurate and custom built drive shaft. Now this thing is heavy duty. So let's go ahead and get started and show you just how easy it is to replace your stock drive shafts. So the first step in removing your stock drive shaft is to actually remove the four bolts that are holding it onto the differential. Now these are 15 millimeters, so pull out your 15 millimeter socket. So keep these bolts because you will be using them in the install of your Adams drive shaft. So the next step is to remove the drive shaft from where it goes into the transfer case. So these are pretty small. They are an eight millimeter and there's a bunch of them. And I know it's pretty hard to see on the video, but they are right here. So let's go ahead and get those started and removed. Once you have all the bolts removed, you're going to need a hammer and a punch. A little chisel will help as well. And there are in fact little holes in the side over here that will allow you to get a punch in there. So we're going to get a hammer and a punch and we're just going to start knocking away at it. As you can see, the drive shaft will come loose. We're also going to need to make sure we get the front drive shaft off of the pinion. So we're just going to take a hammer and knock it loose. And there you go. Now it's time to get rid of the front drive shaft. Now that we have the front drive shaft completely out of the way, there is one more bolt that we're going to have to remove. And that is in the yoke where the um, drive shaft connects to the transfer case. It is fairly large. It's a one and a quarter inch socket so we're gonna go ahead and get that out of there so once we have the one and a quarter inch bolt off of there we're just gonna try to tap the yoke that comes stock with it off of the transfer case so the yoke will take a little bit of gentle persuasion in order to get it off but it will come off so before we begin I just wanted to show you a comparison between the two drive shafts so the stock one is this front one here, and the Adams is the black one in the back. As you can see, the Adams is a lot smaller, and the joints actually look a whole hell of a lot beefier. This joint right here, it's a Rezepa joint. It almost looks like a CV boot. But that is the actual joint that was making that god-awful noise whenever I had put it in four-wheel drive. And as you can see, it's just, it's tore up. It's beat up. It's time to go. Now, Terraflex does make a high angle Rezepa joint. However, you're going to end up replacing it again. And by the time you replace it about two, three times, you could have bought a beefier upgraded drive shaft with the actual universal joints that are going to hold up a whole lot longer. You are going to reuse this O ring out of the stock yoke. So you're just going to pull it out of there. Wipe it off a little bit. Chances are you're going to have some dirt and stuff on your fingers. You don't want that going into the transfer case. So you're going to take the O-ring and put it into the yoke right down in here that Adams provides with the new drive shaft. You're also going to want a little bit of black RTV. So you'll put this along the edge of this bolt just to make sure you get a good seal and no fluid from your transfer case leaks out. Okay, so now that we have the stock drive shaft out of the way and the stock uh, yoke that goes into the transfer case, we replaced the old O-ring that came with the stock yoke, and we're just going to put it on to the new shaft just like that. 
and I put a bead of black RTV around the bottom of the bolt, so we're just going to put that back on there. And tighten it down. Now, you will need a torque wrench as well. Spe specs on this say 160 foot-pounds, so make sure you have a torque wrench that will go up to 160 foot-pounds. And there we go, 160 foot-pounds. Now it's time to tighten down the bolts that hold it to the front differential. Now don't tighten them all the way down, just get them started. Make sure you got a good fit. We will tighten down to torque specs after we get the other end installed. The kit comes with four 12.8 millimeter bolts that you're going to use to attach the new yoke to the drive shaft. It also comes with some red Loctite, so make sure you get a little bit of red Loctite on those threads. Now that we have all the bolts actually somewhat tightened down, it's time to torque to spec. Now, the issue that you're going to run into is in the back here with these 12-point bolts. Factory torque specs are 15 pounds, but it's going to be impossible to actually get a torque wrench in there. So you're just going to have to do it by hand and feel. Okay, so the bolts on the front pinion or the front, front differential, those are torqued down to 80 foot-pounds. So the last step of the install is we're going to throw some grease on there. There is a grease zerk right here. It comes pre-greased from the factory. However, we're just going to make sure it's topped off and good to go. Well, there you go. That is the install of an Adams front drive shaft on a 2016 Jeep JKU. It wasn't that hard. All in all, it took about 30, 40 minutes uh, from start to finish. So it is something that you could do in your driveway. It's not difficult. Just make sure you have the tools required. As always, if you like this video, please hit that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. Hopefully, I will see you on the trail sometime soon. Have a great day.